everyone, it's Lindy. Welcome back to my channel. If you were led to this video or if you are a regular viewer of my YouTube channel, chances are you are interested in learning different ways of making money from home. So my question for you today is, would you like to make an extra thousand dollars every single month? If the answer to that question is yes, then please stick around because that's exactly what we're going to be talking about today. I have numerous videos on my YouTube channel talking all about selling merchandise online by primarily using the eBay platform. But today I want to shift focus and look over at Facebook Marketplace because if you're wanting to make some quick money from home, Facebook Marketplace is probably going to be your best opportunity to do that. In today's video, I want to do exactly that. I want to present to you a roadmap to making an extra $1,000 in profit per month on Facebook Marketplace. Now the variables to this roadmap should definitely be altered depending on where you live and the kind of merchandise you're able to source. But what I'm hoping this is going to do is serve as a guide to what exactly you would need to do in order to generate that kind of profit. Now when you're selling merchandise locally, there are two different kinds of merchandise that you can flip in my opinion. You have the big merchandise and you have the little merchandise. And they are exactly what they sound like. The big merchandise is bigger items that usually sell for significantly more money. And the smaller merchandise is smaller items that typically sell for less money. And in my opinion, the fastest way to generate an extra $250 a week in profit or $1,000 per month is to go with the larger, more valuable merchandise. And the reason for this is because the more revenue that you can bring in with fewer items, the less pickups you're going to need to coordinate the less listings you're going to need to have on Facebook Marketplace, the fewer messages you're going to have to juggle, and the faster the cash flow is going to come in. When you take into consideration smaller items that are worth significantly less, you then have to move more items, which means you have to coordinate more pickups, you have to filter more messages, and you have to move more items in a shorter time period in order to generate that exact same profit. For example, in order to make $250 in profit or $1,000 per month, if there is an estimated profit of $50 per item, you only need to sell five of those items to generate a $250 profit. As opposed to a smaller item that you might only be getting a $10 profit, you would have to sell 25 of those in the same period. So if we're talking about the fastest way to make $250 in profit or $1,000 per month, we choose the path of least resistance, which would be the larger, more valuable items. So the roadmap starts with capital. When when you are selling merchandise for profit, that means that you need to have capital to buy the merchandise that you intend to flip. I do have some numerous videos going through some Target bulk pallets that I received from Wholesale Ninjas. I will make sure to link those down in the video description below. Wholesale Ninjas is my preferred supplier for this kind of inventory because it's always consistent. They also have some really good price points for these Target bulk pallets. They range anywhere from $600 to $625 per pallet depending. Not only that, but Wholesale Ninjas is is a partner of my YouTube channel and they sponsor lots of my videos, including this one which means that I do have a coupon code for them. The code is Lindy25 and it gets you $25 off of anything on their site. But I've had a lot of success flipping items off of their target bulk pallets. So when beginning this roadmap, we start with capital. One month has four weeks, therefore we're looking at four pallets. At a cost of $600 per pallet, that comes out to $2,400 in capital for the merchandise itself plus the cost of shipping, which these kind of pallets are freight delivery, which means they tend to be a little bit more expensive because they're not just being shipped something like FedEx ground. I get asked a lot how much freight shipping costs and unfortunately I can't give you an approximate number because it really does depend on how far the merchandise is traveling and how many different freight companies need to pass along the merchandise in order for it to get to you. All I can do is give you my own personal freight delivery experience and that would be roughly $800 for four pallets. So it comes out to roughly $200 per pallet. Something else that I have also learned about freight delivery is that it's always best to buy your pallets all at once versus one at a time. Your first initial reaction might be to just buy one pallet per week, but I can tell you in my own personal experience, when you do that, you pay significantly more in freight. You end up getting a better freight cost per pallet when you do all of your deliveries at once versus having one pallet shipped at a time. Your freight shipping per pallet could end up being double if you're just purchasing one singular pallet. So four pallets 
all together is roughly $800 in shipping, which brings your upfront capital cost to $3,200. $3,200 in capital to have four pallets delivered to your house. Again, this is just a general basic roadmap. You might have different variables for you. You might have cheaper freight. You might get a better deal on merchandise somewhere else. This is me just laying it all out to you on a silver platter using my own experience. So that means that with each pallet costing $600 plus a $200 per pallet freight charge, that's $800 all in per pallet, meaning if you were needing to make a $250 profit per pallet, you would need to sell that pallet to other people for at least $1,050. Now let's talk about the elephant in the room. $3,200 is a lot of capital. Not everybody just has an extra $3,200 sitting around to go buy four pallets worth of inventory. So it's very likely that this might not be something that you can jump up and do immediately. If you're a newer viewer of my YouTube channel, you might not know that years ago, I started my reselling journey with only $20. I did an entire video talking about how I took that initial capital and I just kept rolling it to build build up enough profits to where I could continue to snowball that capital and amass it to a big enough amount of money to where I could buy the kind of inventory that I eventually wanted to buy. So if you don't have the $3,200 in capital, start with what you do have. If you need to start selling smaller things first, in order to get to the bigger things, then definitely adapt this roadmap however you would need to. If you need to sell smaller items at only a $10 profit to just keep getting the capital in order to eventually get pallets, then that's what you do. This video is definitely not to say that this is the only way to make $1,000 a month on Facebook Marketplace. There are a lot of paths. This is just the path of least resistance if you have the capital to do it. So if you don't have the capital to do it, start with what you can. Use those profits to snowball into more capital and just work your way up. Because I know from firsthand experience, when I first started, there was no way I'd be able to just go out and buy four pallets at one time. That would have been absolutely unattainable to me. So don't think that just because you can't go out and buy a whole pallet worth of merchandise, that it's not worth doing. Because I can tell you from experience, starting years ago with only $20, it is absolutely possible as long as you are ambitious enough, as long as you have a clear vision of what you want to achieve, you can absolutely do it. So the fact that I just said, starting with $3,200 in capital, do not disregard this message as unattainable because I promise you, you can get there as long as you keep flipping. You just have to start somewhere. Okay, back to the roadmap. So that would mean that everything that you sold on each pallet would need to total more than $1,050. Or after you sold all four pallets, you would need to sell everything in its entirety for $4,200 in order to make a $1,000 profit over the course of those four weeks. All right, so now it's the start of the month. You have four pallets show up. What comes next? The first thing, week one, that is going to take you the most time of all of the weeks in order to make this kind of profit is going to be unpacking everything from the pallets, making note of things, and photographing. In my experience, pallets like these have roughly 20 to 25 units on them. So over the course of four pallets, you might have 80 or 90 items. But a lot of those items could end up being duplicates, meaning there's less photos to take and less listings that you're going to need to do. So what I like to do whenever I get a group of pallets like this is I like to pull everything off of the pallet. I will write every Everything down. If I'm not exactly sure what something is when I pull it off the palette, usually I will scan a barcode or do a simple Google search and I will write it somewhere on the box so that I know what it is. Here's a pro tip to help speed up the process of knowing exactly what's in some of these boxes. Make sure to download the Target app or the Walmart app because a lot of the times these boxes will have barcodes on the outside and if these are items that still need to be put together or they're just brown boxed and you're not even exactly 
exactly sure what it is, both the Target app and the Walmart app have the ability to scan the barcode in the search bar. It will search the platform for anything with a matching UPC and tell you exactly what the item is. This is also really helpful if you need to find stock photos. If you are an eBay seller or a Poshmark seller, you might have heard that stock photos aren't exactly ethical and you're not supposed to use them. However, if you have merchandise in brown boxes and you're listing on Facebook Marketplace, I personally do not have a problem with using stock photos because you want your potential buyer to know what they're getting. If you just take a picture of a brown box, they're not gonna have any idea what they're buying. Also scanning the barcodes to not only get the stock photos, you'll also get an idea of the retail cost, which will help you price your item later. Once you get really good at this, this entire unloading process really shouldn't take you more than a couple of hours as long as you put your nose to the grind and you get it done. So for the next couple of hours, you're pulling things off of the pallet, you're writing things down, you're scanning barcodes to see what the value is, you're saving stock photos. And then if you have the ability to take photos of things without having to use the stock photo, this is also the time where you do that. And this doesn't have to be a huge production. The last round of pallets that I got, I just took the photographs outside. It was sunlight. I didn't need to have any sort of a lighting kit or a backdrop. I literally just put things out on the grass and snapped some photos. And they look pretty good in my opinion. I didn't need any fancy background setup. I didn't need to drag things into my house. I just did it right there outside of my garage. But the most important part, aside from making sure that you have everything photographed, is writing things down and writing down what they sell for. This is going to save you so much time later because when you go to actually list the items on Facebook Marketplace, you'll already have an idea of what to ask for them. And because you already know how much you need to sell everything for, that's also gonna help you when the offers start coming in. So after you get your first delivery and you get all of those steps done, let's talk about what happens every week after. All you have to do is list the stuff and schedule the pickups. I highly recommend sticking with listing items off of one pallet per week. Now, you might be feeling adventurous. You might be feeling like, I have all of the photos. I have everything written down. Everything's ready to go. Why should I only list one pallet of merchandise per week? Why shouldn't I list it all at once and get the cash flow even faster? Well, I can tell you from personal experience that I tried that and it turned out to be a nightmare. I listed way too many items all at once and all of the messages and pickups and questions became very overwhelming very quickly. So if you have the time to create 50 listings all at once and juggle all those pickups, then by all means, go for it. But for me, I have so many different things going on, including online sales, a family, social media. There is no possible way I can juggle 50 people all at the same time. So for that reason, I don't like to list more than one pallet worth of merchandise in a week. Even then, I personally don't like listing it all in one day. If I have 12 different listings in a pallet, I might spread it out and do three listings a day for four days. That just really helps to keep the chaos of all of the contacts at bay so that I don't rip my hair out. But since you did all of that work up front, because you already have everything written down, you have all of the retail prices, you even have the photographs done, I'll bet you that you can list an entire pallet worth of merchandise in less than one hour every week. The listing process on Facebook Marketplace is so fast and easy. I actually have a list with me video where I actually list items with you on Facebook Marketplace. I'll make sure to link it down in the video description. I actually have an entire playlist all about Facebook Marketplace, so make sure to check the video description for that. But listing on Facebook Marketplace is so stinking fast. Once you already have everything written down, you have photographs, you already know what the retail price is, so you know what prices to pick based on whatever profit you need to generate, I will bet you that you can get an entire pallet's worth of merchandise listed each week in less than an hour. 
I literally list everything that I list on Facebook Marketplace from the couch cuddling with my kids. That's the power of having everything on your phone. It's completely mobile. You've already done the work up front. It makes it that much faster. So now you've created your listings for Facebook. You've gotten everything priced. Photos are up. Now you're just waiting for the customers. Let me give you a couple of tips on how to keep all of those pickups moving as seamlessly as possible so that it does not monopolize your time. Because remember, we're striving to make $1,000 in profit every single month, but that doesn't mean that we want to spend all of our free time making that money. The reason why I pick big items over little items is because I want to do the smallest amount of work as possible to generate the same outcome. I would rather coordinate fewer pickups to get the same money than sell a bunch of small items and coordinate dozens of pickups a day. So the biggest tip that I can give you to minimize the time spent doing these exchanges and getting money for the items that you're selling is to really utilize the porch pickup option with people. Not only can porch pickup be a lot more convenient for you if you are really busy, but it's also really helpful for people that are a little hesitant to deal with the public. Not everybody is an extrovert. Not everybody loves meeting strangers. So the idea of doing porch pickup completely alleviates the need to interact with people. Now, because we're dealing with bigger, bulkier items that are typically worth more money, if you are going to do porch pickup, I highly recommend utilizing Facebook Pay. There are lots of people that use Facebook Pay now. It's really not a weird thing to ask for. When someone pays you using Facebook Pay, the money is automatically deposited into your bank account. There's not even any fees that you have to pay for this feature. So if you're really busy and you don't wanna have to coordinate an exact pickup time with somebody, you can just simply tell them that they can pay you using Facebook Pay. Just let you know whenever they're on the way and you could put the item out on the porch and they can just walk up and pick it up at their convenience. Doing porch pickups has saved me a significant amount of time. There's no more of this having to coordinate an exact time that works for everybody. There's no more having to stop work to go meet somebody at the door. I can be doing whatever work I need to be doing. I get a message from my buyer that says, okay, I'm on the way. I just go put it up on the porch. Deal is done. I already have the money. Something else that I like to do to coordinate pickups is just use a simple notepad. I will just have one sheet of paper B for a day. The top half is for the morning. The bottom half is for the afternoon. If today is Friday, then I'm going to have Friday and the date written at the top. Anyone who's coming to pick up in the morning, I will write their name and what item they're picking up here. In the afternoon or evening, I will write their name and the item that they're picking up here. Just so at a glance, I can know exactly how many people I have coming on what day and around what time they're going to show up. I also make sure to have people message me when they're on the way because if they're doing porch pickups, I don't wanna have the item sitting out on the porch all day. I want them to tell me that they're on the way so that I can put it out for them. Also, the Facebook Marketplace app does have the ability to renew listings every seven days and this is something that I definitely recommend doing. A lot of the times listings will get buried so you might need to go into the listing and edit it just a little bit to kind of push it up back in search. And if Facebook gives you the option to renew your listing, definitely make sure you're staying on top of that. In my experience, as long as you're pricing your items competitively enough, mostly everything should sell through in about two weeks. Now, will everything sell out? No, I have had a few things that just will not sell on Facebook Marketplace. Maybe I end up putting it online. Maybe I have to sell it significantly cheaper than I really wanted to just to move it. But the goal here is to not have to sell everything off of the pallet in order to make the kind of profit that we're hoping to make. Remember towards the beginning of the video when I talked about how much revenue you would have to bring in on average per pallet in order to generate a $250 profit per pallet. At the $600 price point plus freight, you would have to sell everything on a single pallet for roughly $1,050. Because when you sell everything for $1,050 per pallet or $4,200 for all four pallets, then that's how you're going to hit your $1,000 goal. But ultimately, the goal would be to sell as much as you can off of the pallet at the best price as possible. That way you've already hit your $1,050 revenue goal 
per palette without having to sell everything on the palette to get there. So the end goal would be to just sell whatever you can as fast as you can for as much as you can. And then if some of the items are taking a little bit longer to sell, it's just straight profit when it finally does sell because you've already made your revenue goal for the items that sold faster. And then of course, rinse and repeat. I don't know about you, but I love doing local sales. I end up building relationships with local buyers. I always have local buyers really curious as to what I do, how I do it, and contacting them if I happen to come across something that they might be looking for. So the more often you do this, the more often that you are able to connect with potential buyers, the faster you can start to move stuff. Not only can it turn into the faster you start to move stuff, but also the faster that you're able to process the palettes once they arrive. The faster you're able to do product research and find pricing information, the faster you can pull stock photos, the faster you can take photos, and then the faster you can get the listings up and live ready to be sold. But that is a basic roadmap for making an extra $1,000 in profit every single month on Facebook Marketplace. All right, you guys, hopefully that was easy enough to understand. Sometimes things are difficult to communicate to you, so hopefully what I said made sense. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them down in the comments below. Don't forget to give the video a thumbs up if you like this kind of content. And remember to subscribe if you haven't already and ring the notification bell. That way you're notified whenever I post a new video. Don't forget to check the video description. I will put a lot of useful information in there as well as any videos I might have referenced in this video. Thank you guys again so much for watching. I will see you with my next video. Bye-bye.